Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial. And lately I've been thinking about metallic sounds. How do these producers get these cool like metallic sounds? It sounds like a, a really tight echo or some kind of interesting resonance. Their bass sounds, their snares, all kinds of different sounds are sounding very metallic these days. And I wanna know how they do it. So I've done a little bit of experimenting, mostly with Corpus. Let's check it out. So to start off with here, I've got a little drum beat that I made. And it's just, you know, a snare sample with a little bit of processing. The kick, I'm using Kick 2, which is a great plugin. You should totally pick that up. Just some percussion layers and you get the idea. So what we're going to try and do is turn the snare into a metallic snare. Give it that sound that like a mallet is hitting an anvil, you know? Oh, by the way, I've got this frequency shifter here to repitch the snare. And this is really the best way to repitch a snare. I'm going on a segue. If you use a transposition to repitch a snare, you're kind of like taking all the frequencies and shifting them like like this in unison whereas frequency shifter kind of stretches the frequencies allowing you to move the fundamental pitch of the snare without losing your crispy highs and stuff you definitely don't want to lose your crispy highs that's for sure check it out yeah anyway I'm going on a tangent. Let's drag in a corpus. We'll put it just after the frequency shifter and before the processing. A lot of you probably haven't even really used corpus before and maybe don't even know what corpus is. So it's basically a virtual resonator that adds physical characteristics to your audio signal. You can kind of think of it like uh, you have a, a virtual object like something in this list here, like a beam or a tube or a plate, and you're kind of like bouncing the audio off of that. So that's really what Corpus does, and it's really, really good at it. So let's take a listen to the snare by itself now. And we've got it set to beam. <laughs> let's try a plate, because that's gonna give us that anvil sort of sound. And we can turn the quality up here to full. And that just adds like more uh, resonant harmonic characteristics. Let's turn the decay down a bit and the material up. As you move the material knob higher, you get more higher frequency resonance. And as you move it down, you get lower frequency resonance. Let's turn the decay up a little bit and the tune down. So we wanted something like that. That sounds pretty sweet. This listening L and listening R is kind of like if you imagine a big square piece of metal and you've got some contact marks on there, you're hitting the snare directly in the center of the piece of metal. You know, where do you want to have your microphones? All the way to the edges or one in the middle, one on the left, that kind of thing. So that's all that does. The hit, it also just sort of changes the way um, you're hearing the resonance. The brightness pretty much does what you would expect. And the inharm is kind of like a built-in frequency shifter as well. So let's turn that up. It kind of like stretches and compresses the uh, resonant harmonics. Uh, it sounded pretty cool up here, actually. Let's try moving this hit up. You really just got to experiment with these knobs because it's such an arbitrary description of what they do. I kind of wish there was like a little 3D model of what you're manipulating. I'd love to see an update for this plugin, maybe someday. The spread kind of does what you think it would do as well. It adds like unison, I suppose, and spreads them from the left and right. You'd probably be able to hear it better if I turn the material down. And the cool thing is there's all these different modes. So let's try pipe. <laughs> it's like uh, you got a flip flop and you're just whacking it against the end of a pipe. It sounds really cool. Tube. It's like a smaller pipe, I guess. Let's try membrane. I guess that's like a really large piece of thinner metal maybe, or a wall or something like that. String is just like a guitar string, I suppose. Although that does not sound like a guitar string. That kind of sounds like a guitar string, like a piano string maybe. Let's turn the tune up actually. There's a dry wet mix as well, so we can turn that all the way to wet. And then there's this bleed option here, which lets some of the original signal through, which can help you give your sound back some of the uh, high frequencies if we have the material set really low. Yeah, that doesn't really work with the string. <laughs> it's all about experimentation with this plugin for sure.
marimba. I'm not even sure what a marimba is, but it sounds, it sounds fun. It sounds like a good time. <laughs> Beam. Check out these beams. So yeah, um, I think plate is gonna work the best for this snare. Let's turn the material way up. So yeah, that kind of gives you an idea on how this works. The ratio, um, I believe, is the ratio between the length and the width of the, the physical uh, object or virtual physical object that you're um, bouncing the sound off of. So it can be a square or it can be a rectangle or, you know, who knows how that's going to change the sound? I don't know. We got to turn the knob and just see, you know? So it's, it's really fun to play with, just turning all these little knobs and messing around with it. But there's heaps more stuff you can do with this. We're just using a snare. Let's do something else. <laughs> okay, let's do something different with Corpus. And I've recorded this really dumb audio file of me just, well, listen, I, I put a OTT on there, a frequency shifter, and I EQ'd some of the highs out. Take this. Slap, 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 slap the bass, yeah. Slap the bass, yeah. Slip the bass. <laughs> so I'm gonna render that and then we're gonna put that into Hama. Now, <laughs> if you haven't heard of Hama, this plugin is ridiculous. It's an additive synth. So the way that it's different to a subtractive synth, which is probably what you're used to, like Serum and, and Massive and those things, a subtractive synth takes a oscillator, like a single cycle oscillator or a wavetable of, of waves and cycles between the waves and that sort of thing. And then it carves away at the sound, like using filters and flanges and distortion and, and things like that. But Hama, although it looks like it's playing a saw wave right now, we've got the mix turned to the left, it's actually well, every single one of these lines is an individual sine wave. They're placed in strategic positions to emulate a saw wave. And if you look, a square wave is the same thing, but every other one. And there's something like 600 sine waves that this plugin can play. What's really interesting about this plugin, and I'm not I'm not an expert on Hama, it's a very complicated plugin. I'm still trying to get my head around it. But the interesting thing about it is because the synthesizer is playing each individual sine wave on its own, when you do things like filter, all it's really doing is turning the volume down on individual sine waves and then turning them back up. Similar with resonance, it's just increasing the volume of sine waves at certain positions. And so you can do some crazy, crazy stuff. Like there's all these different filter curves that you can do with Hama that aren't possible with other plugins. <laughs> Anyway, we're just scratching the surface with, with that stuff. Let me just set this back to how it was. We're going to go over to the advanced tab. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Hama because honestly, you should probably just go watch Seamless because he's the expert. But what I really want to be talking about in this tutorial is Corpus. So let's get on with that. So on the image tab, um, if you know anything about Hama, you know that you can drag samples in and it will resynthesize them. Slap, 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 slap the bass, yeah. So that sounds exactly like the sample that we had before, except Hama is resynthesizing this vocal sample using individual sine waves. So this is not a sample, it's a resynthesized version of the same thing, which is ridiculous. So if we turn the scale down, slap, 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 slap the bass, yeah. You can see that we start to get remnants of a of a bass sound. Slip, lip, 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 slip of the bass, yeah. I like that bit there. Bass, yeah. <laughs> uh, we can turn the harmonizer up a little bit, and we'll just randomize this matrix. Bass, yeah. Bass, yeah. Bass, yeah. And we can also change the formants. Bass, yeah. Bass, yeah. And we'll turn the unison up. Let's set it to classic mode. Now you might be thinking, damn Slink, that sounds pretty cool. Just wait, man. Wait till we put a corpus on it because it's ridiculous. So inside corpus, if you click this little arrow here, it unlocks 
the sickest features. So remember before when we were turning this tuning knob, well, you can actually take a MIDI input and it will automatically tune according to whatever MIDI key you're hitting. So let's set this to 12, which is our Hama channel and we'll turn the frequency on and we'll set the pitch pin range to two, which is uh, the default of Hama here. And we'll set it to pipe. Now that's resonating a little bit too high. Let's go down an octave. Let's go down another octave. 24. Let's go down another octave. <laughs> 36. Oh man. Let's try tube. Oh man, like suddenly it's like suddenly it's like so much more badass than it was before. It's awesome. And so this combo here, Hama and Corpus, makes for the most ridiculous bass sounds that I could even imagine. Once you start tweaking all this other stuff, like the phaser. Turn the resonance down a bit. You can even play this stuff in reverse. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, dude. It's so ridiculous. Um, there's also a little distortion. We can add a little distortion to this. And you can see things start to get insane. <laughs> that might be a little bit too much distortion, actually. Turn that down a bit. Maybe we'll try a different mode. Classic. <laughs> and like, you can put anything into this box here. You can put pictures. This is really cool. I got this picture of me DJing a show. If you see my backpack there, I was experimenting with this the other day. It sounds really cool. This is my backpack in the corner here. <laughs> Get some pretty cool metallic sounds like that. So the way the picture situation works in Hama is anything that's white will be a frequency that's loud. Anything that's dark will be a frequency that's very not loud or off, I suppose. So these lines are my shirt. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Let's put a jar of mayonnaise in here. See what that sounds like. <laughs> oh man, it's so crazy. So I've I've got all these samples that I've just been um oh man. That I've been trying to like screw around with, just put in Hama coupled with the corpus. It sounds really, really cool. So I made this like neuro sound. Oh no, that that one. This one, this one. Yeah. This one was really cool. And there were some really cool like backwards ones here. Like that as a one shot is pretty badass. Bro. And like without the corpus. Yeah, it still sounds pretty cool, but man, corpus really gives it that extra flavor. There's so much stuff you can do with this crazy plugin. It's insanity. <sighs> crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. What a combo. Hama and Corpus sounds ridiculous. I just kind of stumbled across that trick and wanted to share it. I was dropping audio clips on my Discord server and some of the guys on there were like, what, how are you making this sound? <laughs> so I wanted to just put together a quick tutorial. Nothing too in-depth. I know I didn't really go through exactly how Corpus works or all the cool things you can do with Hama, but maybe that's a tutorial for another date. So cool. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yeah.